Exploring the Marine Biome, A World Beneath the Waves by Vinny Bozio. The marine biome is a vast and diverse ecosystem that covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface. It encompasses a wide range of habitats from coral reefs and kelp forests to open oceans and deep sea trenches. This movie explores the unique characteristics of the marine biome, including its abiotic and biotic factors, the flow of energy in its food webs, the utilization of natural resources, and the environmental threats it faces. So the marine biome encompasses the vast bodies of saltwater on Earth, including oceans, seas, and coral reefs. It covers up approximately 70% of the planet's surface, as I stated earlier, and it is distributed across various latitudes and longitudes. The marine biome is characterized by its diverse ecosystems, ranging from shallow coastal areas to deep ocean trenches. It is home to a multitude of plant and animal species, many of which exhibit unique adaptations to survive in this aquatic environment. Moving on to climate and features in the marine biome. Rainfall is not a significant factor here. Instead, it is characterized by the water cycle and evaporation from the ocean surface, which contributes to the formation of clouds and precipitation on land, as shown in this picture. Moving on to the temperature ranges. The temperature ranges in the marine biome vary depending on the location and depth. Surface temperatures can range from near freezing in polar regions to tropical temperatures near the equator. Next, the seasonal changes and special weather events that go on in the marine biome. It experiences seasonal variations in temperature and sunlight with distinct summer and winter seasons in some regions. Special weather events such as hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones can occur in the certain areas affecting marine life and ecosystems. Now we will talk about abiotic and biotic factors. First, we'll discuss the dominant plants. Here I have three examples, which are giant kelp, phytoplankton, and seagrass. First shown is giant kelp, and its adaptation is a gas-filled bladder that provides buoyancy, which allows it to grow towards the ocean surface. Next, we have phytoplankton. Here shown is a phytoplankton bloom, which is all the phytoplankton built up towards the surface, and which is almost exactly the definition of its adaptation, which is the ability to photosynthesize and float near the water surface to capture sunlight. Lastly, we have seagrass, which adaptation is a long ribbon-like leaf for photosynthesis and root-like structures for anchoring in the sediment. Moving on to dominant animals, we have the great white shark, clownfish, and blue whale. First shown is the great white shark, which has a streamlined body, sharp teeth, and powerful jaws for hunting. Next, we have the clownfish, which is mutualist, which has a mutualistic relationship with sea and anemones for shelter and protection. And last, we have the blue whale, which is large in size and has baleen plates for filter feeding on krill and plankton. I'll explain what an abiotic factor is. Abiotic factors are the non-living components of an ecosystem that influence the organisms living within it. They include physical characteristics such as temperature, sunlight, water availability, and soil composition. These factors create the environmental conditions that determine which organisms can survive and thrive in a particular ecosystem. First, sunlight is essential for photosynthesis in marine plants and algae, providing energy for the ecosystem. Next, the marine biome has high salt concentrations due to the dissolved salts in the seawater, affecting the distribution of species. And then next, the rise and falls of tide influence the movement of water, nutrient availability, and behavior of marine organisms. 
Now moving on to biotic factors. Biotic factors in an ecosystem refer to living organisms and their interactions with each other. In the context of the marine biome, some examples of biotic factors include phytoplankton, zooplankton, and fish. First, phytoplankton are microscopic algae that form the base of the marine food web through photosynthesis. Next is the zooplankton, which are small animals such as krill and copepods that feed on phytoplankton and serve as a food source for many marine organisms. And last is fish, a diverse group of aquatic vertebrates that accompany various niches in the marine ecosystem, ranging from small reef fish to large pelagic fish. Moving on to the flow of energy in the food web. In a marine biome, the flow of energy in the food web begins with the primary producers, which are mainly phytoplankton and algae. These organisms use sunlight, water, and nutrients to perform photosynthesis and convert them into organic matter. The primary producers are then consumed by primary consumers, which are typically herbivores such as zooplankton, small fish, and marine invertebrates. These herbivores obtain energy by feeding on the primary producers. Next, the energy moves up the food chain to the secondary consumers, which are carnivores that feed on the herbivores. Secondary consumers can include larger fish, marine mammals, and predatory invertebrates. They obtain energy by consuming the primary consumers. The energy transfer continues to higher levels of consumers known as tertiary consumers, which can include large predators like sharks, dolphins, and apex predators at the top of the marine food chain biome. Moving on to natural resources. In marine biomes, some of the natural resources include fish and seafood, minerals and metals, and energy resources such as wind, tidal, and wave energy. Humans can use these natural resources in various ways. The most commonly used ways are fishing and aquaculture along with energy production. By, and the way they use this energy production is offshore windmills and tidal energy converters. So marine biomes face several environmental threats both natural and human induced. Some examples are overfishing, pollution, and climate change. Moving on, to protect marine biomes, several actions can be taken. Sustainable fishing practices, pollution prevention, and climate change mitigation. Finally, to sum it all up, the marine biome is a vital component of our planet's ecosystems, supporting an incredible array of life and providing numerous resources and services. However, it is also under increasing pr pressure due to human activities, including overfishing, pollution, and climate change. It is crucial that we recognize the importance of protecting and, and conserving the marine biome, implementing sustainable practices, and promoting responsible stewardship to ensure its long-term health and the well-being of both marine organisms and human populations that depend on it.